This is a Podco original. And I ended up doing 35 callbacks. What? Oh. And got cast as Shrek. In yeah! Shrek the musical on Broadway. You did it! Gustavo was recast. What uh, was it like working with them, them boys? James, I've known since he was 12. I like went to my dressing room and I like fell apart. I also have a just a really I can tell you real quick, yeah. I have an Elton John story that's like outrageous. Yes, please. It? I said, Weird. whoa, whoa. Weird. We're on a podcast. podcast. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Hi. Okay, welcome back. Uh, we have a very special guest in studio Super today. Special. I like to think of you as our um, Scott Fellows cousin, as our yeah. Nickelodeon cousin, right? Yeah. It feels oh, this way. For sure. Uh, we have Steven Glickman on the pod. Hey, hey, hey. Um, hey. Of big time rush fame, of uh, uh, TikTok virality recently. Oh, yeah. Wow. I've been going and in. I got to come see you record your comedy music special and I learned you are an unbelievably talented musician which I didn't uh, know so that was fun you got a fan you got a fan yeah, big fan. Uh, that was really fun, man. Thanks Thank for having you. me Did out. you get a big time yeah. rush when you went big... and watched them? <laughs> wow. <laughs> but, um, chill. That was nice, Daniel. Give me some. That was your wow. best one in a while. Yeah, I'm going to adapt you for that. I've never heard that. Wow. Uh -huh. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> <laughs> Ever. <laughs> I've never heard it. Not once. <laughs> That's great. Um, hey, man. Thanks for coming. Thanks for be coming to my show. That was cool. Yeah. To do that. that was rad. How'd that go for you? How'd you feel? So fun. That was crazy. That was like six months, six months from we booked it. We booked the date for my uh, album taping six months in advance. And then mm. it was just and then I just went around on the road, colleges and shows and uh, House of Blues and all sorts of stuff, trying out all the songs, working with all these different musicians I'd never gotten to work with before. And then uh, it all came together. I mean, I literally did 20 days of rehearsal leading up to the actual show with uh, nine different musicians. So wow, man. It was so fun. And, uh, a real good time. And six months of oh. planning it, and it just so happened Thanks. that a month before your crazy cover just blows up on TikTok. Wow. That timing is crazy yeah, pants. Man. Yeah, it is. How far yeah, are we talking? Very. A uh, little over 3 billion plays That's in a month and a half. Shit, yeah, without yeah. knowing it was him, you definitely heard it. It, oh. it, mm. it went around. He does this really yeah. like soulful, yeah. Yeah. this soulful like stripped down cover of crazy. And uh, everyone was uh, doing a bunch of. I've had some run-ins too with people like like um, Tana uh, Mojo. Mojo, who I don't know, who, I don't, I don't like, know her name. She she used the song, Moynihan? and then I was like, "That's no. that was <laughs> like, me, that was me," Mojo. and she was like. <laughs> What? Like totally <laughs> yeah. got all weird <laughs> yeah. and like Diplo used it and like all <laughs> yeah. these people yeah. that like, Diplo. that's crazy. Like, uh, I have no, like, I don't know at all, you yeah. know? Right. And then they just, they use it and uh, Julia Fox used it, which was crazy. <gasps> icon, so icon, 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 yeah, icon living. Yeah. Anka Toms. My Anka 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 Anka. Dude, she's amazing. Yeah. Anyway, that sorry. That was un insane. Yeah. Wow, yeah. that is incredible. Yeah, yeah. Freaking TikTok. Yo, TikTok's wild. wild. TikTok Isn't is it? wild. Yo, it, just the way it resonated. Like, even for me, like, I was hearing the song, and then I'm like, wait a minute, hold on. There's no way it's the same dude. Like, <laughs> I had just met you at Boo Boo's thing, what, yeah. he at that art show or whatever. That and I was like, cool. I, you didn't know this man could produce those sounds. Did not know that. It's very, uh, it's, it, it was a trip. That did, was a yeah. real trip. Did you that grow up crazy. doing musical theater? Is that your oh, yeah, jam? My, my whole life, I was uh, four musicals a year mm. from the second grade till uh, college, till I got to college. I was doing four shows a year at community theater, you know, just a fiddler on the roof again and again and again and again. Yeah. As many times as they would let me, like they just kept... I just kept putting, you know, auditioning and being in all these little community <laughs> theater productions in San Diego. And uh, but well, also like this is so this is so jacked up, but this is 100 percent true. I had a uh, really great director at this one community theater that I did a lot of stuff at. And she would say to us before the show, I don't know if you guys know this, but guess what? An agent is here from Hollywood. <laughs> this was in San Diego. 
no one was ever there. No, no, no. <laughs> she just saying it. Yeah. But she would say that. And then I, it got in my head that if I do enough theater, I'll get discovered. Because there's always an agent in there. Yeah, because there's going to be an agent in the audience. And there was ne uh, never happened. It never, there was never an agent anywhere. <laughs> Dang. Um, but it, but it like, you know, would get it, everyone like primed up and like ready to go. Yeah. And, wanting to perform, yeah. wanting yeah, yeah, to do yeah. it right. So like I, I ended up going to school for musical theater because I, literally thought that like if i do that i could get discovered for television and do other stuff and they don't really of, care about they musicals do they? But Not, it, it kind of worked in a weird way because um in like a weird sort of kind of Kind of, not really, sort of. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Okay. It always works that way. <laughs> okay, go on. Um, in a roundabout way, it did. Yeah. I so I was uh, living in L.A. doing stand up. Um, I I had I was I'd done a tour. It was it was really a, kind of a bad tour, but yeah, I, it ended, and I ended up just like doing stand up here. And then working at the comedy store, and then a guy, one of the employees at the comedy store, I was doing stand up. I've been doing stand up 20 years now, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, this one guy at the com uh, comedy store was like, hey, they're auditioning uh, people for that Shrek musical. You should go audition for, uh, for Shrek. And I was like, and just a random guy just walks up to you, like, yeah, hey, you look like a Shrek. Yeah, he was like, you look like a Shrek. And I was like, <laughs> you should go. Yourself. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. That's horrible, horrible, <laughs> and like super, super mean. You know? And also, what's the address? <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Also, like, I Spot guess on. I'll go. And like, I went to an open call, and it was like me and a hundred fat guys just sitting in a room, oh, nice. just like the worst smelling room you've ever been in. Oh, yeah. It was just all these horrible a summer afternoon people. in the valley. Ooh, you ooh, walk ooh, in and you're like, oh, ooh. I got this. I was like, this is not great. <laughs> And uh, and then um, right, I'm like about. I have I have um, I brought sheet music for the Bare Necessities. <gasps> Hell oh, yeah, nice. I'll sing Bare Necessities because because like Shrek's a big guy, Baloo is a so big, smart, big guy. Right? I was like that's yeah. similar. And I'm about to do it, and the guy next to me goes, "What are you singing? Why do you have a Disney book?" And I go, "Oh, because I'm gonna do Bare Necessities." <laughs> and he goes, don't, "Don't you know this is a rock musical?" Shrek is a is gonna like sing big like a big rock yeah. number, and I was like, "What?" And he was like, yeah, that's, he was like, "That's why I'm doing Meatloaf." Ooh. And I was like, "Oh my god!" I was like, "What?" Well, what? I was like, "This is the only thing I have, you know, like, the only she music I have." And I went out to my car, like kind of getting ready to leave, and yeah. I opened my trunk, and in my trunk was a Ray Charles uh, songbook, mm. and I was like. All right, whatever. Shrek Ray grab, Charles. Grab the Ray Charles, walked in, and uh, I was like, all right, here we go. And I did uh, what I say, uh, the Ray Charles song for the, you know. Hey, yeah. that's and what. Threw that on the piano, sang it, finished, and they looked at each other, the, the casting director and the director, and they were like, they looked back at me, and then this lady goes, um, I feel like we've been looking for you for two years. And I was like, oh. what? And she was like, you're a comedian and you can sing like that. Like, that's what we're, that's what we need. And I was like, okay. And she was like, can you come back and read for Shrek? And mm. I was like, yeah, but like what part? And she was like, for Shrek. <laughs> and I was like, okay, whatever <laughs> weird lady, you know? Yeah. And I like went out and worked on it and I didn't have an accent. Like I could not do the Shrek voice mm. at all. I, so I did like, you a don't have British, Scottish. I didn't, I didn't. So I did like a British accent and it was cause <laughs> I was the closest I had. And they were like, do you think you could go home and learn this accent and come back tomorrow? And I was like, Sure. And like, I was like, just so unenthused because I was mm. like, there's no way I'm getting Gonna this. Get you know, Ooh. there's no way this is happening for me. And on the drive home, I stopped by a video store. Okay. What the fuck is that? How oh, old yeah, are you? Right? I am <laughs> old as <laughs> shit. <laughs> uh, this is tw 2006. Yeah. Okay. I bought a DVD of Shrek and I went home. And I was like, here's twenty dollars I'm never gonna see again. Dang. Like went home and I watched the movie from start to finish like five rental. times, maybe. <laughs> he bought it. I bought yeah. it. 
Oh, <laughs> uh, I like I just watched Shrek, and then the first time I watched it all the way through, second time I repeated every line yep. that he had, yep. and then third time I Donkey! I was like just trying, <laughs> just trying to get it, you know. Nice. And then I came in the next day and did it, and they were like, "All right, more callbacks," and I ended up doing. 35 callbacks. What? Oh. And got cast as Shrek. In yeah. Shrek the musical on Broadway. You and did they, it. They moved me from my little crappy apartment in Encino uh -huh. to 58th and 5th Avenue. And I lived there God for two bless. years and worked on Shrek the musical. Lit. Like Sutton Foster and all these, Matt, like Jeffrey Katzenberg and uh, Sam Mendes and David Geffen and Dude. all these huge yeah. people. Like life changing, life changing stuff. Dude. And uh, yeah, when that ended, that whole thing ended, I got back to LA. I was literally here for two, like two weeks when I got Big Time Rush. So it Holy was shit. Like, wow. So it just right was back like back. one kind of right into the other. It was a very short uh time in between yeah wow that's yeah. like a wave after another it, nice. and the thing is too is that like when i came back i had a couple of big meetings well, it was like maybe like a couple couple weeks maybe about a month from yeah. the time i got back into actually getting it but like for the first couple of weeks of being back in la i would like meet with like the heads of I got to like meet with like the head of Warner Brothers and the head of Universal and all these places. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And my first meeting was with this woman who was running Universal. And she goes, um, congratulations on starring on Broadway. Big deal, you know, big stuff. Starring in a musical, Shrek the musical. And I was like, well, actually, they replaced me right before the show opened. So I got to do all the workshops and the readings of the musical. But then right before it opened, they replaced me with like a very famous Broadway actor. What? Which is which is what happens on what? Broadway. They have people like you know run the role and help yeah. the role get built. And then sometimes, if you're lucky, they'll give you royalties on the show, okay. for, which they gave me 20 years of royalties. Nice, wow, nice. for the work oh, that you music, put into the, put the development. The good, yeah, good. so even though like I got let go right before, me and the That's donkey and devastating. the dragon all got let go right before it After opened. two years of working on it? Two years. Yeah, Yeesh. Yeah, yeah. And the, f funny enough, the, the woman who was the dragon just won a Tony Award this year. Amazing. So, uh, hey, congrats to her. Everyone was super talented. It was just a matter of like f them ensuring the show would be like the biggest possible success. Right. It's, they go they for they a did. big Broadway. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Wicked. All, all the biggest Broadway shows, they've had someone workshop it and then had a really famous but, person. But were in. you, you're not aware that's happening. No. You get a surprise phone call mm -hmm. right before it opens. Yeah, it was super depressing. I was gonna what say, was how, like? how was yeah. that deep dark depression? <laughs> it was, uh, it was, it was, um, it was not not great. <laughs> no, it was not great per se. No, it did help me with one really specific kind of weird thing, which is it helped me to appreciate the moments of the things that I'm working on. So, hmm. like, even though it was super heartbreaking losing that losing that role and it was like a life-changing thing at the time right everything that i've done since has been like okay well i love getting to go to set and shoot one episode of this show you know like doing one episode of a tv show yeah. wow what a big deal fantastic yeah. time yeah Oh, it, I got now I'm recurring. I get to come back again. Beautiful. Wow, two episodes? Like, right. Yeah. And there's craft services. Gratitude, I get to gratitude, eat all the yes. snacks I want. Like, oh, I have my own trailer. Oh my God, that's so cool. Oh, this is happening because of it. It's like I've really learned to appreciate each individual piece of the successes of the business when yeah. good things happen. Because it was heartbreaking that's losing, losing yeah. Shrek, but. But then, like, I did uh, the rough draft voice on Storks. I played the pigeon, uh, p pigeon toady in the movies. Mm, yeah. I'm doing this because this is how tall he is, right? Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> it's an animated character. Yeah, but I'm he like, doesn't he's have, this big. He doesn't yeah. have size. Yeah, he doesn't have size because he's animated. <laughs> I have mental problems. Um, <laughs> don't worry. But when, when we were doing that, I was a rough draft voice along with, like, 10 other actors that were all rough draft voices for this animated movie. We worked on that movie for three years and then at the end of three years they fired everyone that was a rough draft voice 
and then hired all the big stars and Andy Samberg and Jennifer wow. Aniston and Key and Peele. And then they hired me to play that part in hey. the actual movie. Hey. And it was like, because of what had happened with Shrek, I had appreciated every single mm. day that I had a session so much that like, if I would have lost it, it would have sucked, but it would have also been like, well, yeah. I was part of a thing. I got to help make yeah. a thing happen. Yeah, you, know? you were already kind of prepared of Yeah, yeah I kind of mentally that. prepared for that a little bit. And, you know, it's the same thing with, like, anything else I've done since. It's like most of the time I really try to just appreciate the, 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 the moments with it as opposed to instead, yeah. of, instead of putting my head ahead you know, of it, at, you know, mm -hmm. where you're going, like, I couldn't have done this without you. Like instead oh, yeah, of putting uh -huh. yourself there, yeah, putting on yourself, the you know, uh, you know, being happy that you got a gig and that you get to. I mean, I'm happy when I have an audition, Dude. you know. Like yeah. I'm just you have happy to be, to you be, have to to be, be man. in the business. Be yeah, part, this part of it because this business is is brutal. Just the yeah. way it goes is brutal because it's not personal. It's so personal to us, the mm. artists. It's so personal to our dreams. But what plays out like isn't no. them recasting you isn't. But no, I was uh, Gustavo was recast to hmm. to me. Oh, you took you took someone's I took, job. I, I took Brett Gelman's job from <laughs> Stranger Things. He had played Gustavo in the original in the table read. Wow! And then I I replaced him because the What's the vibe show? was. Why is that? Uh, oh, it was because he, Brett Gelman is a, um, how do you, no, real actor. Like, he's oh. like really, oh. really Got good. It. He's like super, super, super. <laughs> real Got it. Got it. He's like can't a real do a Scott Fellowship. He's like an actually scary guy. He's like bringing like, motivation. He okay. like, you know, like, you like um, Gustavo is such like a silly, yeah. scary guy. Yeah. And I'm like a big silly goose, like yeah. as a human being. So having me play like a I, like someone once told me i'm what a child would think is the bad guy in something like if exactly like i i like i kind of they were like you're kind yeah, you're of like a power rangers villain like yeah like the home alone <laughs> villains you know <laughs> like those guys that's my <laughs> cup of tea that's what i like to uh, get in, hit in the face with a fish you know i like i like that kind of yeah. stuff <laughs> and um and brett gelman is like he, he was murray on in stranger things like yeah. he's yeah. he's a terrifying <laughs> individual yeah. you can't hit him in the so, face with a fish <laughs> yeah 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 it was a little too maybe a little too serious i don't know mm, yeah. i don't know but yeah. He, yeah i'm still tripping off the fact that you said 35 callbacks <laughs> that's right? wild like i you know i've been taking through the ringer and felt like oh so many auditions but 35 i think max i've done is maybe like four or five the cool thing about well the nice thing about 35 is like once they hit i think 10 they started they had to start to pay me for call oh okay good good yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, i was like because this industry is just oh, just, just was, taking us for everything actors yeah. get the yeah i think i was getting bang. like a hundred bucks a an audition a callback after that something like this it wasn't like a ton of money but it was but okay at least they also awesome. time yeah like they got me a voice coach to like go and nice. work with someone and they got me uh bob garrett shout out bob garrett <laughs> um they yeah they were like they were really invested but it was i mean 35 is a lot dude. that's a lot was, yeah. to be on the hook for and be holding this like am i gonna get what, it or what not? company yeah. was this what it was dreamworks dreamworks wow well yeah. me yeah it was their it was their first and only broadway musical you that's know wild, man. and like yeah it was nuts it was like a it was such a crazy experience so 35 Shrek. callbacks to not get on the stage yeah, well, <laughs> we would we were doing the God show, damn, this dude. Was so so wild. 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 I'm like, why do two we, years why of life? This is like, no, no, no. That is such yeah. a fucking accomplishment. But I'm like, no. Yeah, why do we do this to like yeah. not even let him? Like, yeah, I mean, <laughs> like we did. So we would do the show at 42nd Street Studios, okay. which is this massive, massive, massive like studio in um these ginormous rooms it's like a costco basically it's yeah. like these massive giant rooms 
that uh, they would fill, they'd build the set in there and then they'd bring in an audience and then we would perform the show for them. They flew my mom out to come watch me do the show. So people didn't get to see the show. Yeah, some people, like we're talking like just not officially open. people per time we would run it, like, Mm -hmm. like would get to like sit in an audience and watch these workshop performances of are of you in Shrek. the costume like full garb sometimes i would be in full prosthetics and but the prosthetics t- at the time were like 6 hours <gasps> to put on the prosthetics oh and then i was in boots that would put me up to like about 7 feet tall so that's legit that's <laughs> that's fun did you, have, so fun, did you bro. have to learn to walk in those or yeah. were you pretty accustomed no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I wear I wear giant. I know. I feel like I've seen you Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> Jumbo. Hey, that's where I went back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, that's what it was. Yeah, that sounds all right. No. Yeah. 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 I, you know, I, we we had to. You know, we were performing on kind of like like a fake set, basically, yeah. like not the real one from the show, but like a fake one. And then the prosthetics would were just tests and tests and tests like sometimes they would do it i'd look like a ninja turtle when it was done <laughs> other times they would do it and i would look exactly like the character and then uh. and then there was a day this is so messed up this is really true there was a day where i was in full prosthetics it was like six hours of makeup and jeffrey katzenberg walks into the room and he goes like this he goes oh my god and he's looking up at my face and he goes oh my god look at that wow is this real? Touches my nose. Oh. I go, no, that's prosthetics. He goes, what about this? I go, prosthetics. And he goes, here? I go, prosthetics. And he goes, what about here? I go, prosthetics. And he goes, so anyone could wear this. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh man. That's messed oh, up. Oh, my <laughs> It's like you're not special oh, behind there. I was like, I was like oh, I'm getting fired. <laughs> Dang. Like, they're going to replace me. Like, I knew right then. Like, I uh, was. That's horrifying. I was being used. Rough. Lord. That's, that's horrifying. horrifying. That's but not anyone because it's a fucking musical. So the voice and performance is unique. Like, your voice is your voice. Yeah, it was, dude, it was nuts, man. Oh, my that God. Was, it was a crazy experience. That That's but really insane. Then I get back to, out to L.A. and I meet with the head of of Universal and uh, this woman she goes uh, oh great job in Shrek I heard you were fantastic starred in this big musical on Broadway so hey what's next what do you want to do next and I went uh, sorry to correct you on this but I was actually let go right Mm -hmm. before the show opened on on Broadway but I did all the Broadway workshops and the readings and she went "Uh, do me a favor okay I go yeah she goes don't ever tell anyone that again (laughs) Hey, she goes, when she's honest, right. she no goes, one's going to know. Yeah, she Did goes, you, when someone says congratulations, say thank, thank you and move on. Yeah, she's right. Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay yeah. all right. The you top know. of this episode, I was just like, oh, he was Strick. Yeah, I, I didn't Broadway. get to see it. That's yeah. still what Steven I'm going to tell Glickman, my friends. star of a hit Broadway <laughs> show, Shrek, Shrek the Musical, is in the which building. he was in for many, many years, starring <laughs> as Shrek. <laughs> On Broadway. I, I just found a, a friend of mine who uh, was also in Shrek the Musical later after me that he he's credited as playing Shrek on Broadway. Oh, so he was really cast. He actually did the, the role. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes. And then I found out how many performances he had done, and it is uh, one. <laughs> oh, wow. He was a replacement for one show. One show. But it was enough... To become his 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 credit, so I mean, Holy dude, it's crazy. Smoke and man. mirrors, man. Smoke and mirrors, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. Right. Well, so wait, then, no, 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 no. Please. I just have a quick question. Yeah, anything. Did your time as Shrek at all compare to your time on the Ricky Lake show? This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Do you ever find yourself on social media doom scrolling, thinking that the grass is greener on the other side? We're not showing the nitty gritty, the tough times or any of that stuff. So don't get caught up in comparisons, okay? You need to enjoy your life and you might need therapy to keep you grounded and remind yourself that your life is worth living and worth enjoying. I've benefited from therapy with BetterHelp there's a better option, okay? If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, and it's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Guys, 
Stop comparing and start focusing with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash NEDS today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash NEDS. Wow. Uh, wow. Throwback? Wow. Did you do? Sheesh. Hold on. You did research. you do research, Lindsay? Oh, my God. <laughs> Lindsay, I'm so proud Is of you. Is this a new, new. fucking like era? Like Wow. Lindsay's got a car now, and all of a sudden she's doing research. Hey. Lindsay, I'm really so impressed. My life together. You really, <laughs> you, you are evolving, up. dude. Yeah. Cool, really yeah. cool. Yeah. Uh, wow, uh, yeah, I did. Three years sober, that was, looking good on you, yeah, dude. Yeah, you look great. <laughs> this you. is really nice. <laughs> Uh, well, Ricky Lake, huh? <laughs> tell, tell us about Ricky Lake. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing John Krasinski looks at the camera. Like, no, I love it. Yo, honestly, yeah. use that's it. what they're there Be for, it. and yep. we will edit them yep. in. This is a mockumentary. <laughs> this shit isn't real. Bruh. No, that's so funny. Ricky, I Ricky was on Lake, the though. Ricky Lake show because I lost 120 pounds mm. between season two and season three of Big Time Rush, which, by the way, Nickelodeon was stoked about, by the way. Oh, like, well, no, they wait, hated it. No, no, you're joking. No. He's joking. Okay. <laughs> they were like, hey, Steven, uh, we got some new craft services. Would you like yeah, to they're see? Like, they're like, here's a bunch of burritos for you to eat You got for three breakfast. hours. Eat it. <laughs> oh my god yeah like it, they they adjusted they adjusted to it but all my wardrobe went in the trash oh. like i mean could you imagine could you imagine the amount of money that they're spending on wardrobe and also like all those hoodies that i wore on the show the crazy yeah hoodies, yeah like crazy every fur. single one of them custom those are all custom oh, hoodies. Wow. so all of those were getting oh, trashed we, or they were getting we can't know, imagine that on ned's uh we had about a 12 dollar wardrobe budget so oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> must be nice yeah, must see be they nice. gave scott some money after us you see <laughs> a little bit you know what though <laughs> first uh episode first few episodes of our show I was like, oh, uh, they put me in a Kangol hat. Oh, I remember. You remember? Yeah. So I wore a Kangol for like the first look. episode. And I was like, dude, I should wear Kangol's in every episode. And they were like, yeah, we don't have the money for you to wear <laughs> yeah. Kangol's in every episode. They're like 45 bucks a hat. Yeah. And, and I was like... like Give me a minute. And I called Kangol in yeah. New York. And I was like, I'm on a series. Here's the thing, guys. is like, you know you can't wear someone's logo, but... Kangles are so unique that like even if you like cover the logo, cover the you, logo know it's you would still yeah, know yeah. and they were like how many do you need and i was like one I, actually we need three okay, of every yeah. color and they were like okay and they sent us a hundred kangle hats <gasps> to start season one wow. and then every season they would send us another hundred hats <laughs> and I've been, go. I've been under contract now personally with Kangol for <laughs> what 10 years no. and they send they send a, yes. a big old box of hats like twice a year and it's it's awesome it's go crazy. get her man yes. yes but Nickelodeon was like uh we're just gonna take this and just shut up like yeah yeah, yeah yeah they were like very happy yeah but yeah. yeah i mean our like i remember the wardrobe budget being like really low. yeah they're real low yeah, yeah they're not yeah the budgets on but, those nickelodeon shows are not high in comparison <laughs> yeah. to so, like so the real shows yeah. work oh my yeah to shrek the musical for sure um That's so funny what uh was it like working with them them boys Ooh, them boys. How about them boys? Oh, I love them uh, boys. We know our audience loves Big Time Rush uh, as much as we do. I've I've shared before, like Kendall and I were homies pre Big Time Rush. Like we were we were little teenagers uh, just smoking weed in the valley, you know, mm -hmm. oh. just hearing uh, Kendall play uh, cover songs on the acoustic. You know, he yeah. was always that guy. Yeah, he's always great voice, so great dude. Talented. Yeah, so cool. Uh, you know. Um, all four of them are lovely, wonderful people. But who's uh, the worst? Oh, easy. Carlos. Uh, hey! <laughs> wow. We were all thinking it. Why were we all thinking Carlos? Wow. Know, she just did a thing with me that is the cutest thing in the whole world. I get a I get a FaceTime from a number I don't have on my phone. And I was like, I was like, like, no, don't answer. I was going to say, a FaceTime from a stranger? No. a stranger? no, thank you. And then I get a text going, uh, answer your phone, it's Carlos. And I go, yeah, sure it is. 
<laughs> and then he goes, James gave me your number. And I go, sure he did. <laughs> I go, I'm going to block this. And he keeps trying to FaceTime. And I go, I go, look, I'm blocking this number <laughs> if you don't send me a voice memo because I don't know who this is. Yeah. And then I get a voice memo from Carlos going, it's me. Please, please pick up your FaceTime. And I was like... <laughs> what the heck? Like Carlos has never, like never, it doesn't call me very often. We don't talk that often, but I was like, all right, sure. So I get on FaceTime with him and he's like, look, I am sorry to bother you, but my oldest son is obsessed with big time rush now with the TV <laughs> show. And he keeps asking, where's Gustavo? Why doesn't daddy have Gustavo over to the house? <laughs> When's Gustavo coming? Uh -huh. Can we, can you get on FaceTime with him and let him know oh, that we're, that we're friends? And I was like, sure. And I get on and I'm like, what's up dog. And this kid, Oh my God, this kid is like, he's just a little kid. And he's so, <laughs> he's so adorable. And it was really sweet. And like, that was a pretty, that was a pretty, you know, cute moment. So now you love him. Carlos again. I, we're good. We're good. We're fine. <laughs> nice. He's a sweetheart. Um, but the like James I've known since he was 12. We, we uh, his mom, his dad, and my mom are friends what? randomly in San Diego. And hmm. so, like, I went to see him uh, in a musical when he was in junior high school or high oh, wow. school. What? And, um, and we we went to we're both Jewish, so we went to uh, what's it called? Like, um a Jewish high holiday thing where we sat at the piano, him and I, when he was like 14 and we sang at the piano together. Small world, small world. And, uh, and then you ended up on set and you're yeah. like, <laughs> he, well, they, I know you, they cast him <laughs> first. And then, uh, they were like, Oh, uh, his dad mentioned to my mom at a party. My son just got cast on a Nickelodeon show. And, and I overheard and was like, Oh, tell him congrats. But like, did not think anything of it because I was like, I'm not going to end up on Nickelodeon. Like, no, I'm you're gonna, I'm an adult man. Yeah. yeah. You know, <laughs> right? like, what am I going to do? And, uh, and then they, uh, had me, uh, then I auditioned and then they sent the tape to the boys to show them the, who got cast as mm. Gustavo. And he, freaked out I bet yeah. 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 and was like click man oh my god you know and yeah. then it was really cool because then i had like someone that i could kind of you know yeah. you know pals around with a little bit but logan and i became friends really early and his dressing room was across from mine so we would see each other every morning and have breakfast together basically nice. every day and uh we shot a lot of weird little skits together he's a super funny weird you know wacky guy <laughs> nice. and then kendall kendall is the is like the the one that i'm probably the closest with out of nice. all of them he's been he's the one that's been like the most supportive of like music stuff that yep. i'm doing yep. he produced um i did a cover of how to save a life mm. by uh the fray oh, yeah he, he produced it and sang backup on it and oh awesome played all the instruments on it and it's like he's such a great musician yeah he's yeah. he's such a nice human being he for is. for like in being so encouraging and being cool and yeah you know and yeah yeah like we're we're pretty tight we're pretty uh we're pretty, i love you know, it man yeah. when are you and devin and daniel gonna make a cover <laughs> What's Let's the plan, guys? Let's what do you guys it. want to do? We go to the studio. I got a studio lined up. Turn up. Post about your Pull up cover. downtown. Let's do it. We'll get it. on it. We're in there. We'll Bow. get on it. Let's make it happen. Let's yeah, we'll get it. on it. Mm -hmm. That's wild, I'm intimidated man. by your voice now that I've heard you record yeah, your album. You're, you're, you're insane, hey, man. Come you're, on you're dope. now. Come on now. Oh, man. No, re no really. Nice. The voice of a fucking angel, Lindsay. Look, 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 look. I, I haven't heard your voice, but I did know you were on a robust angel. Hey, you know what? I appreciate that. Lindsay, look at this. <laughs> got good, this good, yeah. She's got that good grip. Right. Gotta love Lindsay. Right. Gotta oh, love yeah, Lindsay. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, a, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of you guys. I, I watched Ned's Declassified. I, I, I saw, I used to watch the show to see what you guys were doing. It was a damn good show. <laughs> I fun, love man. the sarcasm, man. This is great. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, that's not sarcasm. That's real that's stuff. So yeah. Yeah. Well, that's Scott's a genius. Scott's a genius. Yeah, Scott's yeah. A genius yeah sure. but it was a really fun show. There was it a, was, it, man. It was, it was great. And like, I just mentioned it last night to somebody and they were like i grew up watching that show uh -huh. so yeah i mean it's it, you know yeah that's really cool i love that we both have the same showrunner so yeah. Yeah. yeah it's some it's some kinship thing where i like feel yeah. connected to anyone who works with scott it's such a yeah. kindred yeah. experience yeah like for because yeah. you know us, what it is you know to work exactly with scott what it is <laughs> yeah. To be, yeah 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 i'll tell you i'll give you a uh a, a, a like a 
inside baseball, like big time rush story, if you want. Yeah, yeah, give me, I give me. I haven't talked take about us, this before. Take us to Paramount. Um, so, okay, so this is like some real stuff. Like, so um, first season, all of us are brand new. Okay, like none of us have really. I'd been on one TV show prior. Um, James had done iCarly, you know, um, I think Carlos was in Menudo. I'm like, I don't know what was <laughs> happening. And Kendall had been working, you know, trying to, I think he was going to do Spider-Man turn off the dark in the musical. He was going to do Spider-Man. Like uh, he was going to play Spider-Man. Yeah. So like, there was like, we were all had some experience. Oh, and Kendall was the stand in for Haley Joel Osment in AI. Oh, back in the day really so like there wow. was like everyone had some professional yeah. experience but n no nothing you know nothing where we're all series regulars right yeah. so now we're all series regulars we're all working on the show and so we're all kind of coming up together and we all kind of know all the same people right and so here's what happens is um the uh we finish first season and they go off and they do some of their first live performances and I show up to one of their live performances um, at a mall and I wore my Gustavo costume because I thought that no one would know who I was. Yeah. I wouldn't without be able the to, Kangol without the candle and the sunglasses. And the stuff. Yeah. I, there were 5,000 people at this concert and I got like attacked. Rush, yeah. And like I was, I was getting like grabbed at by all these people and they like had to take me and, and like the boys were like what are you Doing. wearing why, would you do this? <laughs> why are you dressed like this like it was so fun it was super awkward and <laughs> i just i was wild. like i was like i didn't think i'd get in I'm like going i mean cover you know, gustavo i mean it, it hasn't ended i mean when big time rush did their first uh comeback show in yeah, new yeah. york I bought fake tickets online, like 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 bullshit tickets. Yeah. Like scab tickets. What are those called? Uh, yes, yeah. StubHub. So I, got... I bought like six hundred dollar tickets uh, to go to their show, thinking that I wouldn't get in. Like, and they were like, "We would have just let let you in." Yeah, like, yeah, but I'm we'll like, put you I'm, on the list, bro. I'm so I'm like. I don't know. I'm always so <laughs> worried brother, that it's not going to work on, out. Brother. Stretch hey, oh, guard you, brother. I really did. I really want to comp you our $29.99 ticket <laughs> as of today and for wow. any of the shows that we get into. Yeah, okay. Okay. Brother, okay. 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 Yeah, brother. Just that's... shoot me a text. I appreciate that. <laughs> you um, keep that $29.99. So what ended up happening <laughs> was during, uh, we go on this break, they go off, they do a bunch of shows, right? We come back, it's season two, we're Good to go. We're doing 30 episodes season two. We are like, we are like keyed nice. in, ready to go. And as we're uh, starting to work, first first episode, uh, one of the guys goes, uh, oh, yeah, you know, last night I was talking to Michael and, uh, oh, my God, he's so funny, dude. And, like, I can't believe he pulled that, you know, thing when we were in Vegas. And I was like, who's Michael? What happened in Vegas? And they were like, oh, don't worry about it. And then they just kept talking. And I was like, uh, okay, uh, that was kind of weird, you know? Yeah. And then later in the day, uh, another one of the boys was like, oh, dude, uh, Larry called, and he said that we have a, a recording session tonight, but we have to do, you know, this if we're going to do it. And I go, oh, who's Larry? And they were like, oh, don't worry about it. It's not, you don't have to worry about it. That's not <laughs> for you, you know? But And they just kept talking, and I was like, oh, okay. And I, like, <laughs> felt this like horrible feeling and I like couldn't figure out what was going yeah, I'm an on. Outsider. I was like, am I, I'm like kind of suddenly being left out. You know? <laughs> and uh, I was like, whatever, brush it off, come back the next day. And they're talking. Same thing happens. <laughs> where one of them was like, Oh dude, Carl uh, sent over uh, that report. You know, we have to go over it before we do the next show. And I was yeah. like, Oh, what's Carl's deal? And they're like, <laughs> I'm just trying to stay in with my my boys, you know. And they're like, and, they're, and they were like, they were like, we don't, AB we don't, you don't need to know about Carl, you know. And and I, uh, you don't want no parts of this. I man. like went to my dressing room and I like fell apart. Like oh. I was a mess, right? Dang. Crying, and I like could not keep it together. And I was like, what is going on with me? Like 
I'm a grown <laughs> man. Jesus. And these I'm are boys. 30 <laughs> years old. I was these 30 years old. I'm like, on the set these of Big Time Rush. These are a bunch of 17 year olds. These are children. I'm like, I don't need to know what, like, <laughs> what is going on with me. This is That's so hilarious. crazy. And uh, I, I had met a therapist uh, at some party. And yeah. I called him and I was like, I need to, I need to talk to someone see about you this today. And he was like, okay. And I went into this therapist and I like sit down with two, that day. I go in, I meet with him. I'm like, here's what they did. Here's what it is. And I'm like, I'm Carl, like and they won't tell me about I'm like, Carl. They won't tell me who any of these guys are. And I feel so left out, but it's like, of, <laughs> I'm being left out of something I don't actually care, care about. about yeah. And I don't know what is going on with me. I'm like, what is this? What does this mean? And this therapist was like, oh, um, have you ever had someone in your life who uh, got a bunch of big opportunities and started traveling a lot and then started ignoring you? And I was like, oh, my dad did that. Oh. Like my dad was like, got became a big businessman and started traveling and then he left. And this therapist goes, well, that's what it is. Mm. Like you're equating these two things. And I go, what do I do to deal with that? And he goes, tell the boys. <gasps> and I was like, really? And he was like, pull them together and tell them how it's affecting you. And Ooh. I was like, okay. And I go in the next day and I call a meeting in Kendall's room <clears throat> and it's me, Kendall, James, Carlos, and Logan. And I go, so here's what happened with my yeah. dad, and here's how this is making me feel when you guys say this. The four of them got up and hugged me oh. and oh. then promised that they would never do that again. And it's been 10 years. They've never once ever kept me out of anything. If I, They've always kept me in. If I need to know, if I ask, oh, who's this person? That they tell me right away. But they, yes. they really, they really <laughs> like, like, kind of felt the felt the pain, felt it, and they were just like, we're here for you. Oh, oh. isn't that like the sweetest thing? No, yes. really, because I thought I thought it could have gone one of two ways. Either they did that, or they erupted in laughter and walked away and disregarded it. They're that's not you, what Daniel. It, uh, Damn, Daniel. <laughs> I mean, no, I don't know. But no, that's such a beautiful freaking thing that they acknowledged it. I think that they they saw the humor in it for sure. For like they a brief were second, like, but they're like, no. But they were like, they saw how much it was affecting me. Yeah. And, and they just cooled it and changed. And it was up. like, it was one time where I was like, oh, wow, we uh, we just all got like, just a little bit closer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, my sure. God. A little yeah. tighter. I mean, tighter. that's how you get closer with people, actually, is those kind of frictiony, yeah. more tender, mm. uncomfortable moments. That's when it locks in deeper, well, you like, know? That show that you came to see, my one of my best friends, uh, this guy Mike, who is a stand-up comedian at the Comedy Store, a very funny guy, uh, when I started transitioning from being just a stand-up comedian to singing and making like music and all this kind of stuff when he, he would ask me what I'm working on or what I'm doing. And I would just kind of be like, eh, you know, and kind of be like, Oh, don't worry. It's like music stuff and whatever. And I just kind of felt embarrassed to like talk with him about it. Cause he's a comedian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And cause it's like comics don't usually like talking about other things outside of comedy. It makes people really uncomfortable. Yeah. Like they just, they're like, if you start talking about acting, they're like, Oh, what's up Hollywood? Yeah, like yeah, they yeah, just yeah. don't get it. And he was like, you know, I, am your friend and I want to be your friend. No matter what work you do, you can talk to me about it and I will still be interested because we're friends. Yeah. And I was like, Oh, okay. So this is what I'm working on. And then I just started talking to him like like a friend instead of talking to him like we were colleagues. Yeah. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it, it like and then so when it came time to write the show and and do this new album, I hired him and he came in oh, and, and helped me to like kind of figure out some of the stories that I would tell and stuff like this in the yep. show because I because this this album that I did is called An Evening with Stephen Kramer Glickman so it's like it's but it starts in 1978 the year before I was born and then we have the dates up on the wall and they just change throughout my lifetime and it's stories from when I was like 
six years old, then a story from, you know, a funny story from when I was like 10 years old, and then they move up. Yeah, into it's like, like a story day. and a song, and then a story and a song, and a story oh, yeah. and a song. Oh, it's it's really, like, it was really it's like enjoyable. A it flowed really, you know, yeah, it kind flowed of. really well. Um, like, yeah, it's really enjoyable. Thanks, I, I, I really, <laughs> I oh. really got a kick out of, oh, I wish I asked you to bring a photo of it. Uh, I really got a kick out of you describing what your look was when you were a teenager. Oh my god! Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, that's I need a, to see a photo of you like that. What you said, dude, you had like brutal. I I I showed up to school <laughs> uh, to junior high school. I was short <laughs> and very round, and I was wearing a silk paisley shirt. Silk is silk shirt ambitious. That's a move. Do you ever watch? Do you ever watch um, <laughs> that show? Um, I think you should leave. Yes, you know the show. Yeah. I think you should leave. Yep. You know the 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 car- where he's he's talking about um, the shirt's really expensive oh, because yeah, the, yeah. the design is really expensive. Yeah, yeah. It was like those kind of shirts where yeah. they were like swirly and crazy. <laughs> so I was wearing like this swirly silk shirt. I Bold. wore Elton John glasses, big Ooh. giant ones. I had um, a mullet with lightning bolt shaped yeah. in the side of my head. Hey. Corduroy pants and um, yeah. and cowboy boots. Right. I, hey. I, not I walked into junior high. Hinged. I walked into junior high just like, hey everyone, I'm here. And then they were just like, get over here, kid. And then they just beat the living shit no. out of me. No. Uh, it was no. I'm uh, Stephen oh, Kramer. I'm, I'm Stephen Kramer Glickman, and I'm a star. That day. Literally. Literally. <laughs> <with the laughs> form. With form. The it was like I was like dipped Ooh, in. You John Ash. Oh yeah. It hey. was like like they picked me up and they just dipped me into bullying. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Like, there you go. Corduroy and Paisley? You can't put that together. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> no one knew what to make of me. Everyone thought I was out of my mind. Oh. Yeah, it's, it's. I mean, I, oh, I still, you know, I like... <laughs> I still have <laughs> quite a w- weird wardrobe, but at the time, my God, was I, I was really going for that it. Was, hey, that was early old, Gustavo. Though. It really, it really, it really it, shines it, through. It sh- seriously. That's wild. Yeah, yeah no, that yeah. image stayed with me from your show. You just describing that, I'm like, this is this man that I know oh, in God. middle school. I wore That's a calculator, a Casio calculator watch. Yeah, you did. And a kid stole it out of my locker, and then he sold it back to me. <laughs> <laughs> Not tight, man. Kids. Oh, facts. No. Facts on facts. <laughs> no. Yeah. Wait, did he sell it to your higher price than you bought it for? No. Um, <laughs> it was like, I think he sold it back to me for like 40 bucks. Wait, but- <laughs> Forty bucks in the nineteen eighties. That's a lot. That's a hell of a lot of money. That's not good. And wait, wait, where'd you grow up? Encino? You said? Uh, no, Encinitas, California. Encinitas. I, I just yeah. have to know two things before, God, so sadly, funny. we have to wrap this interview oh. up. Number no. one, yeah, would you consider? Uh, putting a lightning bolt in the side of your beard like you used to do on your skull hey. in high school. Dude, I've done it, man. <gasps> I have done hey. it. Have you? Yeah, it does not look great. It doesn't look great. <laughs> no. I, I feel like it'd be hard to get. It, you know the what I mean? No, like, no I think you could get it. Lightning you chops, dude. Lightning chops, yeah. chops baby. Oh, lightning solid chops, idea. Lightning baby. chops this down is, to the bucket. That's a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> that's kind of Next Kids Choice Award. Bam. That's what you do. In there. Go. Bam. And lastly, we yeah. like to end each episode. Nope. Before that. Sorry. Oh, yeah. I'm going to cut you off right there. Oh, we got more? Uh, when is the album yeah, dropping? The album dropping? And oh. what music are you releasing? Oh. Yeah, we want, we want to hear this music. I got Come some on. big news for you guys. Yeah, please. Hey, please. So uh, here's what's going on. Uh, we have, uh, a, I did a cover with my guitarist, Soren Chrisell, nice. and Shredder. Uh, it's such a shredder, right? Yeah. So we did a cover of Paralyzed, the Big Time Rush song. Mm. And Lindsay's favorite. It drops. Uh, we did an like an emo rock cover in the style of like My Chemical Romance. Hell yes. And that drops August 23rd. Amazing. And uh, yeah, and then it'll come out on vinyl like about a month after that. And Amazing. We're shoot, we shoot a music video with a, a, one of the guests that has been on the show, Boo Boo Stewart. Yes. Is nice. video. Wow. Boo Boo turn up. And, uh, yeah. We love Boo Boo. Oh yeah, he did I can't too. wait. I'm like, I'm Congrats. so excited. We, we've been, we've had this song, we've been working on it for like two years and uh, it is 
the guys, the big time rush guys have heard it and all liked it. And yeah. Thought it was cool. And so we, we were like, all right, let's, let's, let's you know, let's drop it. Let's get it out. So I love it. I can't uh, wait. Oh. Yeah. Make sure. I think by the time we air this, it'll be close to around then. So make sure yeah. listeners and viewers, you uh, check this out. Yeah. Check out the music. Paralyzed. Yeah. Yeah, 20 turds. Um, and a music video with Boo Boo Stewart, our new friend. Uh, we we like hang with him yeah, now. He was. Dope. He's a good, he's a cool guy. He's the yeah. fucking coolest. Him he's being a so guest cool. on the pod, uh, we were just like, hey, we should. I don't know. Yeah. Him and I like talk movies now and. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. randomly ran into him at the bar in yeah. downtown. Yeah, he's, he's a dope. talented artist too. Super My skill. God. Yeah, his art show that he invited yeah. us to. He is so good and man. unique. It's, it's his own thing. Like yeah. you know, it's like that's that's self taught type stuff, man. Yeah, yeah, it's mm -hmm. of him. It's yeah. so I love cool. Him through my binoculars. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> Are you wearing moisturizer? He looks moisturized no? today, right? Yeah. I mean, I moisturize when I get out of the shower. Glistening. I don't know why. It looks so you just normally like don't shower. I'm just sweating. You look, oh, looks good you look, yeah, you got that thing. It's like glowing. Or something Crystal going on. blue glowing, eyes. Yeah. Are you I'm glowing. Me with those okay. eyes? I've been in the sun a lot. <laughs> you're, you're glowing. Yeah, you have some oh, glare. Yeah. It is summer. Anyway, um, anyway off um, of you. Oh, wait, and when, um, when, when, what's going on with the album? Oh, what album, happens with that? Uh, album is like November. Wait. Great. Um, okay. And it'll come out as a filmed special yep. and a live album and... In November. Did, did so. you make sure there's a close-up of me in it? Absolutely. Nice. Oh, That's my God. Really cool. Most of it is just shots of you. Okay, uh, good, because I actually yeah. wasn't watching you when you were recording it. I was just making sure to look at the camera. My, my kid actor <laughs> training was there. <laughs> right? uh, 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 look at me, please. <laughs> um, it never leaves. That, it really doesn't. No. It really doesn't. No. Yeah, um, <laughs> okay, now you can please. take us to a tip. Wait, please. have you ever worked with Jack Black? I feel like you would smash we, it with. Yeah. We got to hang out okay, one what? night, and that was pretty intense. I would pay money what? to see that. Tell me about this night, just a little bit. Yeah, wait, what? What was the context? Uh, it was well. Okay, so I, I got <laughs> invited to the Kung Fu Panda Two premiere, and <laughs> which is crazy. And he, I ran into him on the carpet, and I was like, I was like, oh my god, I, I can't believe I'm meeting you. And he went, he went. Oh, I know who you are. I see what you're doing on TV, pulling a little Jack Black into your Gustavo in this. <gasps> oh, and, and then he just went, he went, keep on doing what you're doing, kid. And then he like walked away and I was like, ah, like just lost my <laughs> mind. I uh, lost my mind, right? Oh, could not, could not. Universes crossing, that's yeah, dope. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, unbelievable. What a legend. So I, he did a yeah. movie with, um, what? I'm forgetting, uh, Richard Linkletter. He did a movie with Richard Linkletter. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, that was really cool. And I went to the screening of it and they were there together. And I came up to him and I was like, hey, I don't know if you'll remember this, uh, but you know, I was on the show and, and he was like, he was like, Oh yeah, man. What's been going on? You know, and then we Good talked job. for a little yeah. bit, and then I was, I was like, "What do you have coming up next? What are you doing next?" And he's like, "Oh, I get to play uh, um, the uh, the bad guy in the Mario Brothers movie." Oh yeah. And I was yeah. like, "Whoa, that's pretty neat." He and he just, was like, "He was he like, just... I'm having a great time," you know. And then he took like a couple of pictures it's a together. Great impression. It was pretty cool. I auditioned uh, and got a couple of callbacks for School of Rock for Broadway, oh, and that yeah. was funny. Huh. But I didn't get it. But you know, I, lo I just I love him so much. Uh, of oh yeah, I of love course. Him. Love, 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 sure. love, yeah. love tenacious. I've had a lot of weird. There's a lot of weird stories, you know. But the this I've I've had a lot of weird run-ins over the years. <laughs> I yeah. mean, I told the story about um, uh, uh, what's his name um, about Suge Knight on the <laughs> on the yeah, album. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I gotta hear um, this. But yeah. you know, like I. I also have a just really. I can tell you real quick. Yeah. I have an Elton John story that's like outrageous. Yes, please. It? Where yeah. like so there was a charity, <laughs> uh, children's charity, raising money for the L.A. school district, and they had a bunch of singers and actors like show up and sing songs that were all Disney songs, and you know to raise money. And Jason Alexander was one of the people on the show, and Katie Segal was on the show, and all these other fun people and I got to get up and I sang can you feel the love tonight yeah and so um I finish the thing and I get off stage and this uh woman comes up to me and she's like have you ever met Elton John and I was like uh no I haven't you know <laughs> and she was like do you want to meet him and I was like 
Yeah. Am yes. I human? What do you mean? She was like, yeah. I, I work uh, for the publicity department for this movie, Nomeo and Juliet, and he did all the music for it. And the premiere is tomorrow night. Do you want to come? Because Elton's going to be there. Oh. And I was like, oh my. Yes. God. Yes, of course. Right. So I go, I go to the. So thing. you whipped like, out the corduroy and the paisley. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the paisley yeah. shirt, corduroy. Shaved lightning. I was like, <laughs> yeah. you know, ready to go. Right. Um, um, and I like I show up. I'm just like now picturing myself with a mullet yeah. at this age, <laughs> and it's terrifying. Um, so I show up. I show up, and uh, I'm like, wow. I'm like, this can be so cool. We watch the movie, and then we go to the after party. And at the after party, Elton John is sitting at a table surrounded by security and people, and I'm standing at the bar with David Spade and uh, uh, the guy from. Uh, 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 Will and Grace. Uh, Will. Sean, from, oh, Will and Will Grace. Will, Will uh, Sean McCormick. Sean, Will, w- Willie, One Willie. We'll call him Will. Willie, yeah. So we're like, a couple <laughs> couple of people are standing Eric around. McCormick. Eric McCormick. Oh, there we go, Eric. Thank you. So I'm like, a couple of these people, we're all standing around, and I'm like, I'm like, you know, looking over, and I'm like, oh my God, I can keep looking at Elton John. And I'm like, how are you not looking at Elton John? This yeah, is so mm-hmm. Elton John. And like, he's just sitting, but I'm like, I just want to look at him. I just want to stare him at him all day. And while I'm doing this, this woman comes up and she goes, have you met Elton yet? I go, no. She goes, hang on a second. Walks over to him and whispers something to him. And then he looks at me and he goes like this. He goes, <laughs> like come here. And I go, I'll be right back, Spade. And I yeah, walk shut the away. fuck up, David. Go, yeah, David, <laughs> shut the fuck up. And I walk over, and I walk up to him, and he goes, he goes, oh, my dear boy, I heard that you sang one of my songs for a charity event, and how wonderful of you to do that. And I just think it's lovely, and I heard that you were wonderful voice and you did a wonderful job and if you're ever in england ever please stop by please let me know if you're there i would love to see you again and hear you sing in person and i broke into tears like plink 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 like <laughs> tears <laughs> shooting out of my eyeballs like a little anime girl no. just like <laughs> And he goes, he goes, he goes, oh, my dear boy, pulls me in, Don't cry. hugs me, and then <laughs> kisses me on the cheek. Oh. And then he goes, he goes, we will talk very soon. And I go, I go, okay, John, I love you so much. And I like walk back over to the bar <laughs> and David Spade goes, you know Elton John? And I go, you bet your ass I know Elton John. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're best friends. <laughs> You learned other. from that woman at <laughs> Universal. Oh, you bet your ass. Yeah, you bet your ass. That's oh, my yeah. best fucking friend You're right there. my best there. friend in the whole world. Dang. <laughs> Actually going to England next month. I'm going to England next month. We've never seen each other again. <laughs> yeah. But God bless. That what is what, crazy. You haven't God. been to England then recently. I haven't been to England. When never. you go, I you know, know. you got to call. There yeah. are... Yes. Like that, that I, I feel like this whole conversation is like the ups and downs of this dream life we pursue in this industry. Yeah. Is like, wow. there you go. Yeah, baby. There's there the downs and the ups. Yeah. You're, you're hugging Karma's, Elton John. Karma's doing it. Yeah, Karma's yeah. doing it. I, I really wanted you to say that he hugged you and then just sang into your ear softly. <laughs> Can you feel yeah, that, that love tonight? That would have been perfect. <laughs> oh, I'll feel him. it all right. <laughs> hey. Well, I feel um, it. Well, awesome, man. I'm so glad we got to have you on. I'm yeah, so man. glad we... It's because we ran into you at Boo Boo's Art Event. That's why... It's wild, yeah. You I'm were like, so bring excited. me on the fucking pod. And I was like, yeah. I love yeah. the organic Somehow stuff, I feel like man. It feels great. Come away closer. Yeah. Right? Hey. Oh, yeah. Than these two you has. Yeah. Yo, like, yo, you who? For sure. There you go. Yeah. 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 What was your your question you wanted to ask? I wanted to know, so we end each episode with a tip to the audience, and you can stare right at that camera and give it to them. Give it to them good. Um, Just on, like, tip about, I'm not even going to give you context. Just give. About life? Life in general. (laughs) About anything. Anytime anybody gives, like, asks me questions about what I mean, I'm just not going to answer them. Okay. Give me a tip. Here's Here's a tip for life. Um... If you're not invited to a party, don't go. Don't go. It <laughs> never goes well. You may think you'll just sneak in the back. Uh, no one will notice you, but they do. They notice, and they're, <laughs> they didn't want you to be there. So don't go to someone else's party. If they didn't invite you, don't show up. That's a big opposite for a red carpet event. If you are in, if you're not invited to a red carpet, 
Go anyways. Who cares? Who fucking cares? Yeah, show up. Tell them that you're <gasps> on the list. And if they go, no, no, you're not. Go, yes, the hell I am. <laughs> Look at it again. <laughs> you think I wore this tuxedo for nothing? Okay. <laughs> what, are they going to turn you away in a tuxedo? That would be crazy. <laughs> also, buy a tuxedo. Buy a tuxedo. Yeah. Um, but for yeah. women, too, yes? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Absolutely. But for Mostly. personal people's parties, do not show up to someone's party you're not invited what to. What kind of a uh, restraining order do you still have? Look, I showed up I showed up to Adam Sandler's Christmas party without an invitation mm. and uh it was a really bad it, it was really awkward. Um yeah, I didn't get kicked <laughs> out. I didn't get kicked out, but I you were it, just shunned? You felt like you, you I, the, every, it's like everyone knew. Everyone knew Dang. that I was just there, you know. Did Dang. you think it was going to be a bigger party and then it was like you and like nine people or what? No, that that has happened too. Um <laughs> You know, I'll my, blend into the crowd. <laughs> I had oh, one time I uh, was on the way to an event. I was in an Uber. I was wearing a tuxedo and I said, uh, I'm like on the way. And I look out the window and I see at some cool, it was like the Bugatti dealership or something. They were having a red carpet event. And I was like, I'll just get out here because what are they going to do? You know, they're right. going to let me in. Right. You know, I'm wearing, I'm wearing a tux. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm supposed to be. I'm not going to just walk in for no reason. So I get out of the guy's Uber. I walk in into this thing, and there's these two people sitting at the front desk. I go, hey, I'm, uh, I'm supposed to be here. You know, I'm doing the carpet and stuff. And they go, are you sure you're supposed to be here? I go, yeah. What do you think? Yeah. You think I just dress like this for no reason? Okay. <laughs> I'm I'm here, baby. Come on, like let's go. Yeah. And they were Load like, "Okay, uh, we'll take you in." And they walk me in to the Chinese New Year's celebration. Hey. For uh, the Chinese Culture Arts Center of Los Here. Angeles. He comes in. He's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm just like, I'm like, howdy, folks. And everyone was like. What are you doing here? And wow. all the women were in red, and all the uh -huh. men. Um, I was the I, I was the only uh, white guy there, and yeah, uh, like, no one was here? happy to see me. Do you have a great um, night though? I had a great time. <laughs> hey, that's what it's about. Yeah. That's what it's about. Point is, is that try just you know, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. That's terrible. Wait advice. for your invitation <laughs> physically, but not wait, mentally. Yeah, right. Wait for the invitation physically, not mentally. But mentally, hey, you you're take always your invited. shot, right? Yeah, yeah take Verbally, your shot. Oh you're yeah, throwing it. Also, <laughs> oh, you know what? Here's another little piece of advice. I'll give you one more good <laughs> piece of advice. Go ahead. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, people in this business are always like, like actors and stuff are always like. Oh, oh, uh, I got to get an agent. I got to get an agent. That's so important. I got to get an agent. And I got to like, how do I get an agent? And as soon as you realize that it is not your job to get an agent, but it is the agent's job to find you, that is that takes so much pressure off of having to like, don't hmm. send, don't send, you know, uh, things in the mail and you're real <laughs> to a bunch of agents. Just... <laughs> I'm I am telling you the amount of of headshots oh, I sent out to agents <laughs> over the years and then it was yeah. like well now you can audition through actors access for things yeah. and you can get jobs and then you know at film festivals and at at, at stand up nights and at improv nights agents their job at night is to go watch those people perform and go watch short films at film festivals so that they can find the next Emerging talent that talent. they're gonna find, you know. Right. So uh, they listen to podcasts so that they can find who they're gonna represent. Like, but uh. stop making it your <laughs> own. It's true. It's very true. They will Not for us. They, they haven't called, but oh, <laughs> they, they keep will. swiping left. They oh, will. Right, whichever way. I I watch the show. You guys are terrific at Thanks, what you do. Man. Hey. Thanks, so don't man. don't feel like it is on you to find them. Let them find you. Take that responsibility out of that's yourself. A good tip. Let it that go. Tip. That's a good that's a good tip. perspective shift. Yeah. That's actually great. No, we I need to it, hear that more than you know. You, you got a tip you want to yeah. throw to people um, Lens? Go listen to Steven Glicksman's covers Glicksmans. like me. Glicksman's. <laughs> hey, Glicksman's. <laughs> also, your line of hardware stores you're opening. Glicksman's. Um, Daniel? Me? Daniel, don't fucking look at me like that. <laughs> Daniel, keep 
fuck? You literally just looked at me like. Don't judge me. <laughs> I'm not, I swear I didn't. You caught me at the tail end of another <sighs> micro expression. <laughs> That's so funny. He literally goes. <laughs> Good lord. But um, yes, my tip will be, hey, take a uh, take a note from um from Steve's experience, man. Thirty five auditions just for I mean, thirty five callbacks just to finally get a role that may or may not be your end all be all. Right. Mm -hmm. But enjoy those moments, man. Enjoy each moment on that freaking journey. Uh, life is full of so many different paths and not every path is gonna take you to that final destination, but enjoy each moment, enjoy that destination and get ready for that next path that's gonna come out. Ooh, love it. Uh, and I'm gonna take from Steven's uh, story about the boys and him needing to share his therapy with them. Um, you know, sometimes uh, a friendship getting deeper is one vulnerable conversation away. Mm. Um, yes. Instead mm. of distance and resentment and weirdness and you feeling shame and them feeling weird, instead of that happening because you're not willing to have that conversation, um, like literally sometimes just being a little brave and a little uh, vulnerable and telling someone what's going on, that you're that close to uh, like a much deeper relationship. Mm. Um, yeah. So have those if, That's why I keep if you have you guys them. all this shit. You know what oh man, Lindsay, yeah, yeah. Lindsay, every, Lindsay, every. Hey, oh, like, get any oh, guys, guys, can Another we help on the, the phone? Text. Anyway, anyway, um, love you. Check so out Steven's cover. Yeah, check out the cover. Did. Check I'm out so the album. Seriously, Seriously. The I literally the man man all the time from there. make a like, make a TikTok with crazy. Let's bring it back for more virality. Let's go. Let's do a TikTok right now with that. Oh, we uh, yeah. should, yeah, honestly. Uh, you okay, look, love you. See you next week. Peace. Bye, guys. Yeah! Hey! Thanks for watching this week's episode. Uh, guys, shout out. is it time for <laughs> Super, Super Friends, Friends Dance? Dance. Super Friends Dance. Thank you for being patrons. Thank we you. love you. Special shout out. Thanks for making this pa uh, th this podcast possible. Go to patreon.com slash netspod if you want more from that us part. and to support us. We love you. Love Thank you. you. See you next week. Bye.